Also, other people to the seventh episode of the second series of Taskmaster New Zealand. My name is Jeremy Wells, and for all intents and purposes of this particular show, I am the Taskmaster. For many months, I have been giving five renowned entertainers the chance to entertain me by performing a series of elaborate tasks. Tonight, I decide who is the best at doing them, and then, once it's all over in three short weeks, we crown our Season 2 champion, our contestants, as they are every week, David Correos! Yeah. Guy Montgomery! Yeah. Laura Daniels! Yeah. Matt Heath! Yeah. And Ursula Carlson! Yeah. And by my side, the man who holds an iPad like the Statue of Liberty holds her torch. <laughs> it's Paul Anthony Allen Williams! Yeah. I feel a little weird this week, Jeremy. I've got a bad case of imposter syndrome. I think it all began when I forged those documents and, and moved to New Zealand and assumed the identity of Paul Williams. <laughs> when did that happen? Like, the late 90s, yeah. I was very young. Yeah. Look, don't make me feel bad about it. I've got imposter syndrome. <laughs> Paul, I would very much like you to introduce the first prize task, please. OK, this week... Our contestants have brought along the biggest bargain. And whoever has brought in the biggest bargain will get five points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the episode will take home all five big bargains. Let's start with Guy Montgomery. I came across a bottle opener and it was a steal at only $120. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that sounds like quite a lot for a bottle opener, but, you know, I've seen them go for as much as 130 <laughs> And does it open bottles? Not brilliantly. <laughs> I think because the soul of the person who's trapped in the bottle opener hates his job so much. <laughs> Laura, what did you bring in? I took 20 New Zealand dollars, and in exchange, I bought 50 billion Zimbabwean dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever is holding on to this beautiful note is going to be an instant billionaire. It's worth about 32 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Who's up next? Ursula. Yes. I can't go into too much detail. Let's just say I had access to where they would make the Briscoe staff cards and I uh, made one. <laughs> This is the Briscoe's ladies card. So is that a discount on the discount? Yes, so you get, say, the 50% discount, but with the, the Briscoe's ladies card, by the time you get to the checkout, they're giving you Zim dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even paying. They're giving you the products and just bags and bags of Zim dollars <laughs> and send you on your way. David. So what I've got is uh, $50 for 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> if you win... Pay me 50 cents, I'll give you 50 bucks. <laughs> no, if, That's... You, if you win, we just get $50 and you take the label off because who's going to sell $50 for 50 cents? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what did you bring in? A lot of people won't know this, but in 2004, I was in a band called Deja Vu and we released a top 20 album called Brown Sabbath. <gasps> it was a huge success. And... Uh, 2006, we followed that up with a, another top 20 album called Back in Brown. In 2008, we followed it up with an album that no one bought. <laughs> and here's 200 copies of that. <laughs> <laughs> called The Shave of Grunge to Come. And it turns out, if your album doesn't sell very well, one day a courier turns up with <laughs> hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of copies. <laughs> That's just 200 of them. I've got about 2,000 of them in my attic. Wow. We do have some exclusive audio from the album. Would oh. you like to hear that? Oh, yes. fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Can't see why it didn't sell. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a failure to everyone, to be fair, because I once met a painter. He was a huge fan of Deja Voodoo, and I said, oh, what did you like particularly? And he said... 
My favourite album was The Shape of Grunge to Come, and I said, you're the first person I've ever met that's ever said that. <laughs> and then he said, yeah, it got stuck in my CD player <laughs> in my car, and it was all I could listen to for six years. <laughs> yeah. He said, I, I grew to love it. That's what it takes. Yeah, Stockholm you know, Syndrome. Yeah. It's a grower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's probably time to score. I think that guy, clearly your bottle opener, is, what? Uh, well, you paid 100 and whatever you paid for it, so... Some of those are up to 130 $140. <laughs> One point. Matt, I think even in giving away those albums is a terrible thing, so I reckon you get two points. <laughs> yeah, in a way, you'd be helping me out. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like putting out the rubbish. <laughs> David, I'll give you three points. I thought you could be more generous. I mean, you could have given 10 cents for, say, $100. No, oh, yeah, because I don't have $100. <laughs> Four points for Ursula with her Briscoe's car to bargain on bargains. That's yeah. That was good. And uh, that leaves Laura with five points, because I reckon that Zimbabwean economy, I hear rumours that it's going to bounce back. <laughs> Real soon. Now for the biggest bargain of them all, an episode full of tasks on free-to-air television. Would you like to watch one? I would love to. Hello, Paul. Hello, David. Hello, Paul. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Sexy. Little man. Me or him? Him. Uh, him. Okay. Winning! Congrats. All right, exciting. Oh. Oh, got struck the least appropriate wedding cake. You have 45 minutes. Your time starts now. I have nothing. I'm not a big fan of thinking too much. Okay. Kind of starts to hurt. Can I get some sponge cake? There might be some in the kitchen. Okay, cool. Wedding cakes, they often take days. Did you know that? No. Hmm. Well, you've got 43 minutes. Shit, okay. <laughs> what would you consider an inappropriate wedding cake, Paul? Red velvet. <laughs> <laughs> Every other cake flavour, you know what that is. Chocolate, I've eaten that before. Yeah. Red velvet, you've taken a colour and a fabric. <laughs> Who's up first? Here's the classic pairing of Matt and Ursula. It is pretty inappropriate if you can't eat the cake. So, like, a layer of soap, then mud, soap, mud, this. So it balances out. Yeah. I've got the red food colouring. You want me to go get it? Could you be a doll? OK. Thank you. I probably won't even need the other food colouring, but how good is it not to have Paul in the room? Just have that little bit of a breather, you know? <laughs> well, that's, that. that's good mud. Uh. Oh, it's really... <laughs> you... Are you positive that that's not a sewage duct down there, or...? <laughs> it might be sewage. Yeah. If you're tasked with making a cake for someone's wedding and you turn up with a, two buckets of sewage and some cardboard, then it's pretty inappropriate. <laughs> so do you have a plan here? I should do. Can you not see it yet? Not yet. What comes after you get married, Paul? Honeymoon. What does the honeymoon cause? Arguments. Yes. And then children. Oh. For the longest time in your life, you just clean up yourself. And what I noticed when I had kids, uh, was I was spending a lot of time cleaning them up. Right. What does marriage lead to? This kind of shit right here. That's what it leads to. I present to you an appropriate cake. You've got the ring of shit, basically, <laughs> like a toilet bowl. And then you've got the solid, hey, I don't have a lot of fibre. When I do, I have a lot of fibre. <laughs> <laughs> the red on it. It's just the pressure as it comes through ripping and tearing. Okay, thank you, Ursula. Well, do you want the explanation uh, or not? That's enough explanation. <laughs> thank you, Matt. Thank you, Paul. You get an ointment that you can yeah. just, okay. like, get right in there, then it can be solved, like, within a day or two. If you, if you have short fingers, you have to ask your neighbour. Thank you, Because I've got really short fingers, but my neighbour, Gary, he can get in there. <laughs> There's not much that brings me more joy than Ursula, your advances on Paul and then Paul being disgusted by you. There's some real romance developing between you two, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, you can see he tries to fight it 
And then when he starts to embrace it, then I'm repulsed by him. And then it's very days of our lives. <laughs> yeah. Matt, what did you mean with the toilet rolls? The toilet rolls represented how you have to well, wipe your baby's bottom. I named the cake The Truth because <laughs> there's all this it's a great day on your wedding, but that leads to children, which lead to basically a lot of shit and a lot of wiping asses. <laughs> right, who are we watching next? It's the three friends, Laura, Guy and David. I'm going to make this cake inedible and terrible. What's the jam for? Just taste. I don't want the cake to be a complete piece of shit. Right. Yeah, I've still got pride. Any guesses? Tree. Could be a tree. Have you seen a brown wedding cake? Not at any weddings I've been to. You've had one with full umami flavour? Ooh, savoury. Well, this doesn't seem appropriate, does it? Sorry. Cream put it. Cause we're creaming it tonight. Creaming it tonight. We're gonna have a big cream party. Any guesses? A tall person on a bike. Sweet Paul. I had an idea. Okay. About how to make this cake really inappropriate. Okay. Have you seen American Pie? <laughs> How would you feel if we turned all the cameras off and you American pied the cake? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I think I can guess. And I'm not that keen. Can you take us from the cameraman? Don't ask them. OK. Because one of them will do it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this whole chilli? It's kind of a lava cake. Yeah, in a way. Sorry. Yeah. Our groom has left the bride at the altar. He'd ran off with her maid of honour and he's left her this cake and he said sorry, which is polite, but it's inappropriate because this cake is covered in what, Paul? Cream? She's lactose intolerant. <laughs> what does the cake say? Is I fucked your dad. <laughs> That'd be a devastating cake to see on your wedding day. Especially if you didn't suspect anything, you'd be absolutely blindsided. <laughs> you don't cut the cake till after the ceremony's done. They're bound by law. What's it say? Syphilis. <laughs> Why does it say syphilis? Because <laughs> I wouldn't want to see the word syphilis at my wedding. <laughs> Remember that movie we were talking about? There's a the cake. I don't want it to go to waste. OK. I'm just going to leave the room. I'm going to leave the room, cameraman. I'm going to turn the lights off. Finished. Want me to stop the clock? No, so I was quoting your dad. <laughs> I think I caused more damage than I did good. On. I didn't move. I stood here the whole time. Paul, 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 Paul. I think I know an American pieing when I see one. You got a thick dick, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> there was some circumference on there, bro. How did it taste? <laughs> Genuinely, the most delicious of the cakes by far was Laura. Obviously, I ate around the, the hole. <laughs> Let's talk about David's cake. <laughs> which was filled with uh, soy sauce and an entire jar of chilli powder. Yeah, so your cake, was that a reveal cake? Like a, hey, I've got syphilis. <laughs> yeah, and I also wanted to confuse people because they're like, oh, this is a nice Asian meal. <laughs> Guy, with your cake, what did it say exactly? I fucked your dad. <laughs> In Palmerston North, you call that completing the set. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, how do we want to score this? I want to give Ursula the least points only because I had an anal fissure once and that took me back. <laughs> so I'm going to give you two points only because that was a, a bad memory. Laura, Guy and David all deserve three points. 
And I think Matt, with that horrific cake with the toilet paper and what may have been faecal matter and actual I, I, sewage... I think we can pretty much say it was faecal matter. Legally, it's not. Yeah, legally, it's not. <laughs> I think you deserve the five points, so congratulations. <laughs> How are we going so far for this particular episode? It's close, but out in front with eight points, Laura Daniel. <laughs> I'm ready for another task, Paul. Where are we headed to next? We are headed to the caravan. Hello, Laura. Hello, Paul. My, my, my. What a lovely day for it. Can we go in there? Yes, please. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, shut me in. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that at all. A lock-in. Eat the grape. You cannot damage the caravan. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. <gasps> the grape! <gasps> I'm locked in here, aren't I? Oh, no! Why didn't you shut that door? Oh, you locked me in. Yes. That's really nasty, man. Sorry. Is the grape definitely in the caravan? Where's the grape? <laughs> 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 right, Paul. Everybody is locked inside of the caravan. Let's see some people try and do it, eh? These two famously hate each other. It's Guy and Laura. <laughs> <laughs> clues. There's clues. The grape must be in here. Oh, there's a code. Padlocks are bound. Yeah. Money. Am I going to have to use my fucking wits for this? <laughs> I hate that. Nine dollars. Ninety. What the? Do I have to guess the code on this padlock? Oh, there's the grape. Oh. It's outside on big balloons, baby. Where <laughs> can the clues be? Where can the keys be? I'm Guy Montgomery. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I got the keys, I got the keys, I got the keys. What's your birthday? 7th of August, 1992. What's Jeremy's birthday? 7th of June, 1977. <laughs> Sorry to lose book. Wow! A mini task! I like it when things are little. Oh my god, this is like doing an escape room. You're doing great. Ask Paul for a clue. Can I have a clue, Paul? Colder. Colder. Oh. The fridge. <gasps> oh my god! Wow! It's incredible. The thermos. Of hot water! Wow! Melt, baby, melt. Boy, I'm street smart. Oh my god, a burner phone. Hello, you've reached Paul's Key Emporium. I'm actually out of town right now on a work call, but that's not going to stop our crazy key sale. House keys, car keys, caravan padlock keys, <gasps> you name it. All just $10. I can buy a key. I can buy a key. I can buy a key. Paul. Yes? Can I buy a key? I sell keys, yeah. I've only got nine ninety though. They cost $10. Usually stuff always falls down between the couch. Ah! Woo no! No! I got ten dollars. No! One key, please. Come on, come on, come on, come on. People's lives are at stake here. I feel like the hamster that got the grape. Is that a saying? You absolute fuck. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You genuinely seem to love that, Laura. Honestly, I pay to do that. <laughs> you would be the perfect hostage. You can't leave. You're locked in here. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> It's a big puzzle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was impressive. How quick was Laura? Guy, 32 minutes and one second. But Laura, 
She nearly halved that. 16 minutes and wow. 6 seconds. Good job. That was incredible. Mm. <laughs> Whose efforts are we going to watch next, Paul? We love to pair these two together. They are, after all, real-life best friends. Here's Ursula Carlson and Matt Heath. Now, where would someone put a grate? There's nothing in this pig. Take it, Simon. Not my fault I leave money with a South African. You got any clues, Paul? About what? Where the grape is. It's just on the plate. On the plate? Yeah. What plate? Oh, more money. The grape is on the plate. The grape is on the plate. There's a lock thing on here. OK. What's the code? I'm, I'm not supposed to tell you. Oh! It's been out there all along. Yes. I really haven't understood this, have I? Can I bribe you? Just for a code? Yeah. OK. OK. Oh, what's great in numbers? Ten bucks. What's the code? 1977. I'm feeling humiliated here. Why did it take you so long to see the grape? Because I wasn't looking out the window. Right. Ah. <sighs> oh. I didn't learn from my first lesson of not looking out windows, did I? No. Yes! I'm in the cupboard, Paul. Keys! I'm in the fridge, Paul. I found an ice block with a screwdriver in it. I feel like I'm making progress here. Yeah? Hello. What am I was... supposed to open with? Oh, yes. Ten bucks. This is nine dollars ninety. Oh man, that's rough. <laughs> Where would ten cents be? I already gave you the ten bucks. Give me the bloody key. <laughs> you gave me ten dollars for a four-digit code. <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> Come on, ten cents. <laughs> yeah. You take credit. I take credit. That's yours. Thank you. I've looked down the back of this couch about 20 times and found no. God damn it! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my, oh my god. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> Have I finished? Finished what? Oh, I've got to eat the grape. <laughs> I stopped the pot. <laughs> that was rough one. That was uh, Thanks, boy. You did it in the end. It must have been a reasonably frustrating experience. Uh, that was a nightmare, actually. That was one of the worst five hours of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're laughing. <laughs> I didn't spend five hours in there. I just bought my way out of it. <laughs> I didn't know 10 cents were that colour. I thought they were silver. <laughs> Someone's doing well for themselves. <laughs> Matt was actually, he wasn't going too bad until he, he needed the 10 cents. Mm. To find the 10 cents, it took him 26 minutes. Mm. So Ursula, she was 29 minutes 59, which puts her into second place. Oh, wow. And Matt was 47 minutes 54, <laughs> which is currently the longest anyone's taken to do any task this season. <laughs> yes. I feel like it would be... Rude not to notice that David's had his head in his hands the yeah. entire time this conversation's been happening. Yeah. So 16 minutes and 6 seconds is the time to beat. Here's David Correos. Mm. Why are you in here? What's in this one? Oh, what's that? What's that? Nothing. Why is this hot? <laughs> what are you trying? Random numbers to smur, smat. Ram test. Ram test. <laughs> like a computer. I assume the grape's outside, right? The grape's right there. I only just noticed that that grape was there. <laughs> really seems like you've looked everywhere in there. Yeah. Shit! Where would I find a code? Am I looking too small? <laughs> 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 I'm supposed to stay in here, aren't I? I'm supposed to stay in here. There is no grape. There's no reason for me to get out of the caravan. I'm supposed to be in here. The grape is somewhere in the caravan. That's a fake grape. That's a fake grape that I'm not supposed to get. It shouldn't be this hard. It's somewhere in front of me. He's got to think outside the box. 
I can't think outside the box. I literally have to go by the rules you're giving me. <laughs> Everyone in the studio is gonna be like, ha 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 ha. <laughs> you're so stupid. You're so stupid. You're back to pulling books through that little gap? Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Paul, can I have a clue? Colder. Oh, I was supposed to use the hot water, wasn't I? <laughs> Paul, is that your key company? I sell keys. I got 10 bucks. You actually suck. <laughs> Fuck! Where's the... F <laughs> oh, nine, $9.90? The $10, sorry. No! Where's the 10 cents? Where's the... No! I am internet banking. Give me my phone. Give me my phone. If you give me a bank number, I will transfer you the money. Okay. Please? Here's this. You'll transfer me the 10 cents? I'll, I'll transfer you the 10 cents. Give me your bank details and I'll give them to you. I was gonna bring 20 bucks today to buy pie! <laughs> <laughs> this is so frustrating! What's your bank details? Come on, load Kiwi Bank, come on. Okay, here we go. Have a check now. It's there. Pleasure <laughs> you're doing business with you. <laughs> minutes and six seconds was the time to beat. It took David 19 minutes to spot the grape. <laughs> David's overall time was one hour and 23 minutes. Oh, oh bastard. It's an incredibly cruel irony that David wasn't allowed to damage the caravan, but it seems the caravan has permanently damaged <laughs> yeah. What are the final scores? Sadly, one point for David, two points for Matt, yes. three points for Guy, four points for Ursula, and of course, five points for Laura Daniel. <laughs> Great job, Laura. Can we do another task? Sure thing, Jeremy Wells. Put the kettle on because it's tea time, and the T stands for task. What have you got planned? Oh, good day, Paul. Hello, Matt. Good, thanks, mate. I didn't ask. No. What? How are you? Good, thank you. Fairly precarious? Yep. What's the T? What's the T? It's like a... Phrase we use. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Make the most extreme cup of tea. And serve it to Paul. You have 30 minutes to prepare your tea. Your time starts now. Why is everything extreme, Paul? What's wrong with just a normal cup of bloody tea? It's a bit boring. What's extreme? It's up to you. We don't have a bungee here or anything. If you're worried for my safety, would you consider that extreme? Probably. I'm going to need about 40 chilies and a gumboot. <laughs> Lots of definitions of extreme being bandied about there, Paul. How would you make an extreme tea? Maybe instead of six sugars, uh, I'd only have five. <laughs> <laughs> Up first, it's Ursula Carlson. Do you want a snack with your tea too, or just a...? A snack would be nice. This is going to be good. In a pandemic, you want something that'll really blow a cold right out of you. So it's important to go hot. Oh, that's gonna blow your ring right out. Oh, stop it. Who am I? This is dry. Paul. Yes. I sit. G'day, Paul. Hello. Now, I know what it's like to mess on yourself. So, here you go. Oh, look at that beautiful colour. How's that? Very hot. Yeah? Mm hmm Can you feel the flu in you? No. It works! I, I couldn't feel the flu in me before drinking it, though, as well. Is that your... 
I don't actual know throat was. burning out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm worried for you. <laughs> Where did that noise come from exactly? It seemed to come from the esophagus region. It came from deep down, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It was your asshole preparing. <laughs> <laughs> your asshole was stacking ice. <laughs> <laughs> Who's serving up our next cup of tea? Uh, we've got two teas, one from David and one from Matt, spelt with two T's. Mm. Any ideas? Mm -mm. Okay, can I can I grab this? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Um, where do I go to get rope? There's a lot of pressure on me to do something less shit than some of the other stuff I've been doing. You know what I mean? Right. You feel that as well? Uh, I won't comment on that. Right. This is extreme, eh? Yeah. I got nothing. What's the plan? Tie this rope around my ankles and then hang from there like a bat and make your tea hanging like a bat. So I just can't get it bungee jumping down on my dick. Yeah, right. Would I be bungee jumping or will you be bungee jumping? I assume the tea bag, but. Oh! <laughs> okay, yeah, that's strong, eh? That's strong. You're strong. You know when you have an idea that's just so bad that you know before you start it that it's a waste of everyone's time? <laughs> Not really. No, you probably don't. I, I experience it a lot. Thanks, bro. You're doing a good job, bro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Paul, would you like a cup of tea? Uh, yes, please, David. Mate. Thanks, David. Enjoy. Thank you. Three, two, one, bungee. <laughs> Shit. Bungee! God damn it! Three, two, one, bungee! Here you go, mate. There's a cup of tea over there. How's it? It's not bad. Can we cut it so um, it just goes straight in the first time I drop it? Yep. <laughs> yeah, if that bungee operation was actually real, you would have some real problems with Osh. <laughs> <laughs> it was more like a sort of a tea bag on a rope being yeah. dropped off a balcony rather than a bungee. There was no bounce in it. But that was Paul's idea. Don't blame me for this. <laughs> you don't have to do Paul's ideas. Yeah, but I didn't have any of my own. <laughs> David, your idea was actually less about bungeeing, even though you looked like you were going to bungee. You were a tea bat. A tea bat? I felt like a prize tuna. <laughs> <laughs> you got more tea on the way, Paul? Here's some X Games worthy teas from Laura and Guy. What's your favourite type of tea? Iced peach. Okay. I'm going to make something that's extremely sweet for a start. We could go with a spicy tea. So it's going to be hot and cold, the two extremes. So, these are the constituent parts for a cup of tea. Can you please carry the stool for me? OK. Maybe just blend some ice. That could be good, eh? You've got 22 minutes and 12 seconds. Thanks, Paul. You've got a place in my heart. <laughs> I'm building something here. Yeah? Extreme delivery. OK, I'm going to need you to go outside to the shed. There's a bike out there. I need you to put a helmet on. I need you to ride the bike down to just the hollow of this deck here. OK. We pick up the piping hot kettle. On the move. Always moving. Go, Paul. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Did any get in the cup? A lot went on my arm. Around the trampoline, onto the gravel, off-roading. Back onto the tarmac, into the do not enter zone. Slowing down but still moving. Water in the teapot. OK, try another pass. Yeah, I'll pour a steady stream. You go for it. Oh, oh! Come back again. Hey, Paul, this time pause where that puddle is. 
Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Oh, no. There's a huge amount of candy in there. Which is acting as some sort of barrier for the liquid to get out of the spout. All right, gives it a sip. Should I be biking or stationary? Biking, please. OK. I'm going to need you to jog alongside me. Go, 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 let's start jogging, start jogging. <laughs> Trying to spill it. Does that taste good? It's not bad. Really proud of you, buddy. You're doing great. When we arrive at the table, you splinter right, I pull left. Okay. It's extremely nice. Extreme. Thank you, Laura. Stop running. And now I'm out of here. Into the sunset. <laughs> See you later, dude. Thank you, guy. Happy trails. not great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the running alongside the tea looked quite impressive, but the, the tea itself looked horrific, looked like diarrhoea. An extremely bad cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, there was a lot of waterfall action with your tea. Yes, extremely nice. It was, like her cake, it was delicious. Did you fuck the tea? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this episode. Oh, no. <laughs> you seem to have a pretty good time when you're standing outside that caravan, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> OK, should we score it? Yes. I mean, everyone's tea was reasonably extreme, but I thought the bike riding teas were the least extreme, to be what? honest. I want to give you guys two points each. Uh, next, Matt's bungee tea was probably the next lame. What? Hang on a minute. The whole of our economy is based on bungee jumping. <laughs> Urge's tea, I thought, was extreme in its taste, and it made what noise, Paul? It was kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite extreme in flavour, so I reckon four points for you, Ursula. Thank you. And, David, your bat tea with the four production staff holding you up, I thought was pretty impressive. Five points for you. <laughs> How's our scoreboard looking, Paul Williams? In the lead with 15 points, it's Laura Daniel. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's jump right into our live task. Let's go to the stage. <laughs> you know, things have got serious when I leave my throne and join you on the stage, Paul. Yes, it's, it's rare to see you up here, but welcome. Thanks very much. Do you want to hand the task to one of the contestants? Laura Daniel, will you please read this task? I would love to. Survive Lemonade Roulette. The taskmaster will vigorously shake one bottle of lemonade. You must then open one of the two bottles within five seconds. If you open the bottle that has been shook, you will be eliminated. You may ask the taskmaster one question before each vigorous shake. You will get one point for every bottle you survive. There is limitless points to be won in this challenge. Wow. Really? Will you answer truthfully? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just seems like if we're the ones opening the bottle, the jacket's kind of wasted on Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Laura's going to start your question. Jeremy, which bottle are you going to shake? The red one or the blue one? The blue one. Laura, please turn around. Laura, please turn back around. Five, four, three, two. <laughs> Condolences. Yeah. Ursula, your question. Taskmaster, will you be shaking with your wank hand? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ursula, please turn around. Five, four, three, two. <laughs> Condolences, Ursula. Quite happy with myself so far. He's <laughs> got a strong wank arm, guys. Matt Heath. Taskmaster, is there anything sexual happening between you and Hilary Berry? <laughs> Maybe. Please turn around. Five, four, Three. <laughs> <laughs> David, your question. 
Which one are you gonna shake? That one. David, please turn around. Five, four. <laughs> So far, 100% fail rate. <laughs> it actually looks quite hard. <laughs> your question. Can I please borrow your jacket? No. <laughs> please turn around, guy. Five, four, three. <laughs> Unbelievable. 100% fail rate. Let's go down and do the scoring. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at how everyone scored and that remarkable task. <laughs> well, we've got zero points for Laura, zero points for Ursula, zero points for Matt, zero points for David, and zero points for Guy Montgomery. <laughs> so, Paul, how does that affect the overall episode scores? Very little effect. The winner with 15 points... Laura Daniel. Well done, Laura. You now get to drown yourself in bargains like the cheapskate that you are. Get up there <laughs> and enjoy your undervalued haul. <laughs> it's certainly been a night we'll never forget. We enjoyed cake and tea filled with sewage and Fruit Loops, respectively. We watched a caravan practically fill with sweat. And, most importantly, we have a deserving winner in Laura Daniel. Congratulate her one more time, why don't you? I'll see the rest of you next time. Night night. As you travel on God's journey. On my signal! Go! Whatever you choose to be Kidding. is beautiful. I am watering up over here. You may be the judge of this, but Judgment Day is coming for all of us. <laughs> for more Taskmaster, subscribe now.